We've made plans, not promises, and these are the results. This isn't the city I grew up in, that's for sure. We've come a long way. Hi, it's Mayor Matt Bogish. I'm here today to give you an update. An update on where we've been and an update on where we're headed. But before we do, it's important that we remember, that we remember about this time last year, our nation had to start wearing masks. We came together as a community uh, to rally around our families and our first responders uh, and all of our frontline workers uh, who are so susceptible to COVID-19. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a tough year. It's been a tough year for the city as an organization. It's been a tough year for your family, mine included. Um, but we're here one year later with a little glimmer of hope. Before I give you an update on my 12 years, and where I'd like to see us headed in the next 12, I think we should take just a moment of silence to remember those lives lost. Thank you. It's strange standing in the Displains Theater right here in downtown alone, socially distanced with not a soul in the audience. Uh, but this is not the first time that we've come together to mourn and to show our respect. We do it every year at 9-11 in downtown. Um, and it's important that we recognize the contribution of those who put their lives on the line for us, our first responders and all the employees in the city of Des Plaines who have been coming to work day in and day out, keeping us safe and keeping this city running. These last couple of years have been busy. You've dunked me with water. We've handed out tons of checks to deserving residents and businesses uh, across Des Plaines. Um, Mariano's, Jewel. I've thrown a few pizza pies, won awards with Mike Bartholomew and Dorothy Wisniewski for our financial solvency. I've been honored in a few different ways. Once by Cranes, uh, spent some time in New York City discussing local government. Uh, on TV with other local leaders. We've broken ground, we've read, uh, we've opened new businesses, we've cut ribbons all over town, have started countless construction projects, played with school kids all over the place, have celebrated important holidays like the 4th of July, Christmas with Santa coming downtown to Splains uh, in our fire truck. Um, we've supported those in need, those who need it most. Uh, have had some fun at Ice Cream Socials have mourned those lost and have supported those men and women who serve us in uniform every day um, and thank those constituents that have been there with us along the way uh, and as a team we've celebrated our successes and as a family we've celebrated our future uh, my small one included but let's take a quick trip back to memory lane january 16th 2014 i had been your mayor for just a few months and we set a strategy we set a plan we told you what you can expect from me over the next four, over the next eight years. Let's roll that clip. This is where we will begin this year, and our hope is that we don't look back. One, of financial stability, economic development, quality infrastructure, and professional organization. This is a work in progress. And let me tell you, we have not looked back. The same tenets of our strategy which started in 2014 are true today. Financial stability, economic development, quality infrastructure, and a professional organization. Those are the things that we come to work every day focused on. And the proof is really in the pudding. We've slashed our bond debt. In 2009, we had $76 million in debt. Today, we sit at just over 12 million. That's an 84% decrease. That is unmatched in the region. We've done that while also protecting a strong reserve 
so that we have cash on hand when we need it most. We've protected a 25% or greater fund balance, and I would highly recommend we continue to do that so that we can support ourselves in times of need and don't need to rely on financing to do that. Speaking of financing and speaking of our economic vitality, our financial stability has been noticed from our auditors to independent institutions like Moody's that consistently rank us AA2. As context, that is way higher than organizations like the state of Illinois. And that is a true testament to the work that we've done in City Hall, uh, shoring up our financial pillars that support our city long term. Um, and with that strength comes the ability to get aggressive in market. We filled over 6 million square feet of vacant space, 600 million in private investment to create new businesses, to create new economic development in town. And all of that investment has generated new jobs in the region. Those are jobs that are putting food on the table of families across Des Plaines and creating new opportunity that didn't exist before. All of that data is important. All of that background and context matters. Uh, but have you seen it? Have you seen the work around town? And in uh, 2020, we've built over almost $140 million in new construction. Uh, since 2012, construction activity across Des Plaines has increased five-fold. We've had incentives for small businesses to the tune of $181,000 for small businesses, mom and pop shops, to open up stores across Des Plaines. We're investing nearly five times more in infrastructure than we did in 2011. I'm excited to report that since I joined this organization in 09, we've invested just north of $200 million back into the city, back into our neighborhoods, back into the community that you all can touch and feel. Our approach, our solvency, our financial strength means we can use cash instead of a loan from a bank to build, to invest in the community. And that choice, that strategic intent has created $36 million in savings. It means we were able to pay off those projects in 10 years instead of 26 years which means we're getting projects done faster and we're building more. I'm excited to report that Des Plaines is leading the region. We're investing more on infrastructure per capita in Des Plaines than almost all of our neighbors, 27% more than our peer communities. We have 433% less debt than our neighboring communities. 433% less debt. That is dramatic. That truly speaks to a difference, to a behavior shift in Des Plaines that's not being followed everywhere else. That's something you can be proud of as a resident and a business owner in Des Plaines. From a property tax perspective, this is something we all feel, myself included. Our property taxes are 489% lower over the last nine years than our peer communities. 489% lower, which means we've tightened our belt, we've pinched our pennies, we don't raise property taxes every single year like our neighbors do, which means the pressure isn't riding those families and businesses across town. We're trying to do right by each and every one of you and be good stewards of those tax dollars so we don't need to keep coming to you with an open hand every year. And who's noticed? If we make all this progress, if we make all this change and nobody sees and nobody cares, does it really much matter? The market has noticed our sales tax revenue growth is up 42%. Our home values are up 32%. Our occupancy rates are huge and they lead the region. We're 84% occupied in our offices. We're 96% occupied in our industrial space and our retail space while it's struggling this year, is still 70% occupied. That's, that's dramatic. That's a big deal. And it means we're being noticed out there. The strategy that we laid out eight years ago is, is probably more relevant today than it has ever been because it has allowed us 
to cushion the city, our employees, and our entire community in this financial crisis with COVID-19. This is strange. I'm sitting here alone in our brand new theater. Popcorn's still good, but not much else is. And we're getting ready for the end of this pandemic to welcome hundreds of you to our downtown each and every weekend. Um, and we're getting there. We're getting there because we've made plans. We haven't made promises from financial stability to economic development, quality infrastructure, and a professional organization. All of those things made this possible. And I didn't do it alone. There were teammates in City Hall, whether that be my fellow elected officials, the aldermen, the city clerk, those who I spent countless hours over these last 12 years with, plus all of our professional staff, professional staff who really pour their heart and soul into their day-to-day -day work and make this city tick. We have them to thank as well for all of this progress, for all of this stability, and for all this fun new stuff downtown. What am I most excited and proud about? I'd say that in addition to sticking to our strategy, to being steadfast and knowing who we are, uh, we've created great outcomes. As an alderman, I'm most proud of putting in, into motion a strategy where we only spend casino revenue on two things, debt reduction and infrastructure investment. Since the casino opened, we've generated $79 million in new revenue that's gone to just that, infrastructure and debt reduction. I want to make sure that everyone in Des Plaines knows how important that is. In other communities, they've used it to pay for people, for policemen, for firemen. And when a pandemic hits, when the casino closes, when revenue slows down or dries up entirely, it leaves the city in a very precarious position, making choices they don't want to make. We haven't been there. We haven't been in that position. And it's because we've made the right strategic long-term bet. I'm also incredibly proud of the way we've addressed problems. One of those ways is by saving roughly $10,000 a day, $10,000 a day, by changing the source of our water. We're still getting amazing, clean, tasty water from Lake Michigan, but it's not coming through the city of Chicago. That big bet took a ton of infrastructure investment across our town. It took dedication, it took some of that casino revenue, and that big bet has created jobs. That big bet has created the ability for us to introduce competition into a, into a marketplace that was otherwise monopolized by the city of Chicago. And that has saved nearly $12 million for taxpayers across Des Plaines. Since we've transitioned, to a new water source. That has saved residents nearly $800, nearly $800 because of this strategic choice and the way in which we've invested these casino revenues. When I talk about professional organization, sure, I'm talking about the way that we set goals and it's the way that we drive towards those goals as a collective team. I've had a great relationship with those senior staff uh, closest to me. Uh, namely Mike Bartholomew, Dorothy Wisniewski, um, and a number of others throughout our organization uh, who continue to deliver amazing results. Um, I laugh because I think it was maybe my first day in office. Uh, I made Mike and Dorothy sign this contract with me. Uh, the contract was simple. I will not leave, period, with three lines. Um, we all signed it. <laughs> I don't think we knew what we were signing up for when we did sign it. Uh, but eight years later, uh, we're all still here and we're all still contributing to that progress. And that's something we're all proud of. When I say make plans, not promises, I mean it. And for the last eight years, we've made economic development plans and we've stuck to them. We've, we've carried them out. We've seen them through. So I want to challenge the next administration to do the same thing. Uh, not only our downtown here surrounding the Des Plaines Theater, but also our new downtown that we're building along the Oakton Street Corridor. We have a huge opportunity to create uh, magnetism, excitement, investment on that part of town. 
uh, we need to stick to it. We need to stay focused on it, and we need to see it through. And we're here. I'm on stage in downtown Des Plaines at our very own theater, made possible by a private and public partnership with Rivers Casino. This is something to be proud of. This is something to be excited about. And when construction is done and it's safe to do so, we're excited as a city to welcome you to enjoy it right alongside with us. You know, it's been my honor, my pleasure to serve the city over these last 12 years. I've been truly humbled by the support that I've received personally and the votes I received to put me in the mayor's office for these last eight years. I couldn't have done it without your confidence, without your trust, and without your steadfast resolve. Um, my neighbors, my residents, they get it. They want to see progress. They want to see forward motion. They want to see this infrastructure investment and a, a, a smart, sound local government. Um, let's stick to it. Let's stay focused. And let's make sure that we continue to leave this city better than we found it. I want to say a quick thank you to my family, my wife, Kate, who has put up with more than you can believe over these last 12 years, uh, to my daughter, Jacqueline, my son, Matthew. Uh, Matthew's just about one and a half. This pandemic has been going on for most or half of his life. Um, so it's really been a team effort in my household. Uh, but beyond that, my family, my friends, those who have knocked on doors with me, uh, those who have taken my phone calls late at night when I'm frustrated or need some perspective. Um, it takes a village, it takes a city to make a mayor. And I could not be more appreciative of that support. Andrew, congratulations. I know what it's like to raise a young family and be mayor at the same time. You have your work cut out for you, but I know you're up to the challenge. Best of luck. Please stay focused on our future and committed to driving results for residents across Des Plaines. I know you're up to it.